It's so good of you to come down to Vermont for a visit, Jessica. How long has it been? Too long. That's why I jumped at the chance when Middlebury College invited me to be a guest lecturer. It was the perfect opportunity to make a side trip to see you here in Stratton Mountain. I'm so glad you came. Forgive me, Maria, but you seem very tired. Is everything all right? Well, things have been difficult lately, for the business. Your maple syrup sugar bush? How so? A month ago, I had to fire one of my employees. I found out that he'd been stealing from the till, and I haven't found anyone to replace him yet. And to make matters worse, I'm being pressured to sell the business. Really? To who? A company called Nature's Gift Foods. They've been buying up other maple syrup producers in the area, and now they have their sights set on Maple Hill. Why? W what are they doing? Flooding the market with syrup. They have such a lock on production in this area now that it's a virtual monopoly. It's getting harder and harder to compete with that. Maybe this wasn't such a good time to visit after all. I don't want to impose on your hospitality when you have so much going on. Far from it. It's such a relief to have you here to talk to. I'm heading over to Maple Hill now. Would you like to come along and see it? That's odd. Why is this door open? I know I locked it when I left here yesterday. <gasps> it can't be! Who is it? Gerald Morgan! The man I fired a few weeks ago. That tattoo on his hand, I'd recognize it anywhere. Hello, Maria. What happened here? I wish I knew. Oh, uh, this is my friend, Jessica Fletcher, who's visiting me from Maine. Jessica, this is Mark Ashmont, our chief of police. Pleased to meet you, Chief Ashmont. We better take a look around. I guess I'm going to have to tell Gerald's wife the bad news. Do you mind if I come alone, Chief? That'd be all right. You can give me your statement at the station afterwards. 
Something's wrong. Something's happened to Gerald, hasn't it? I'm sorry, Sally. Your husband has been murdered. I knew it. The look on your face. Where did you find him? In the sugar house at Maple Hill Sugarbush. Have any idea why Gerald would have gone there last night? No. But come to think of it, I did find a strange note in the pocket of his spare coat. Oh, it's around here somewhere. Would you mind excusing me? I need to collect myself. Of course. Sally, regarding this note you found, could Gerald have been meeting another woman? Really, Mark? Everything was perfectly fine between Gerald and me. Sorry, I had to ask the question. Sally, was Gerald particularly bitter about being fired by Maria? No, n not really. His new job had better hours and, and better pay. The next person who needs to be notified of Gerald's death is his boss. Who was his new employer? That would be Joanne Marshall, one of the vice presidents of Nature's Gift Foods. It's as good an opportunity as any for me to see what Maria's competition looks like. Good morning, Chief. My receptionist said you needed to speak to me. Yes, I do. This is Mrs. Fletcher, who's been kind enough to accompany me today. Ma'am, I'm here to inform you that one of your employees, Gerald Morgan, was found dead this morning. That's very unfortunate. Gerald was a model employee. He'll be missed. Could you excuse me for just a moment? Sure. Mrs. Fletcher, I don't like that look. What are you thinking? Oh, nothing, really. It's just that she seems so overworked. Maybe it would be nice if we just took a moment to straighten up around here. And take a look around the place while we're at it, I assume? Why, Chief, whatever could you be suggesting?
Ms. Marshall, did you recently send any notes to Gerald Morgan? Notes? No, of course not. Are you sure? Because this note that Ms. Morgan found in her husband's coat pocket was torn from a notepad here in your office. I don't know the first thing about it. My office is always open, and I'm in and out of meetings all day. In fact, I'm late for one now. Do excuse me. Everything about Nature's Gift Food seems very businesslike and efficient, including Ms. Marshall's response to the news of Gerald's death. Maybe the Nature Gift Food syrup bottle we found near Gerald's body will provide some more information. Care to join me back at the station? I'd be delighted. Chief, have you had a chance to look at the contents of the syrup bottle found at the crime scene? No, but wouldn't it contain maple syrup? Maybe or maybe not. Come again? Why would anyone bother to bring along a bottle of Nature's Gift Foods maple syrup if, in fact, all it contained was syrup? I see your point. Chief, we found the victim's car. It was about a quarter mile from Maple Hill. Good work. I put everything we found in the car in the same box as the Maple Hill evidence. We'll have to run some tests on the syrup bottle to confirm it's dye. One thing's for sure, Gerald was up to no good at Maple Hill. That's quite a conclusion to make, Chief, considering we don't know for sure that Gerald was the one who brought the bottle to the sugar house. Who else would have brought it? His killer, possibly. That's ridiculous. Gerald was the one Maria fired. He must have been there, intent on committing sabotage on Maria's business in revenge. But why would Gerald wait a whole month to pursue an act of revenge? Maybe Nature's Gift Foods put Gerald up to it. The $500 in his pocket could suggest a payoff. I'll see if we can track their serial numbers. I keep coming back to Gerald having a picture of Melanie hidden in his car. It, it makes me wonder if there was some sort of relationship between them. And based on the receipt, the coffee shop was probably the last place Gerald went before he was killed. Both excellent reasons to go talk to Melanie, I would say. Hi there. What can I do for you? This receipt shows that Gerald Morgan was here last night at 10.30. Can you confirm that? Well, yes. Why? Because if he was here at that time, there's an excellent chance that you were the last person, well, besides his killer, to see him alive. Killer? Gerald's dead? What happened? That's what we're trying to find out. He was the last person to leave as I was getting ready to close up. He was in a big hurry when he left around 11.30.
He forgot his scarf. I'll take it to Sally for you if you'd like. I put it in one of the lost and found bins. Feel free to have a look. Did Gerald say anything to indicate what his plans were for the rest of the evening? No, he didn't. Melanie, do you have any idea why Gerald would have a picture of you in his car? He did? Uh, no, I don't. I'm just wondering if his having your picture, and the fact that he was lingering here until he was the only customer left, has any significance. Look, I don't know anything about what happened at Maple Hill, but I guess I should tell you that Gerald and I were having an affair. He came by the coffee shop last night to break it off. Why did he do that? I was impatient because Gerald hadn't left Sally yet. So last week I gave him an ultimatum. He had to tell Sally he wanted a divorce or we were through. Gerald picked the second option. I have a new idea about who killed Gerald. Mind coming back to Maple Hill with me, Mrs. Fletcher? Of course. Chief! Jessica! You're back! Maria Olson, I'm placing you under arrest for the murder of Gerald Morgan. What are you talking about? It makes perfect sense. You have motive, defending your business interests against sabotage. You came back to check on the sugar house and found Gerald in the act of sabotaging your batch of sap. Chief, that is ridiculous. After Gerald broke in through the window, he must have attacked Maria when she came in, so she was forced to kill him in self-defense. I can't believe I'm hearing this. I'm not very impressed with your line of reasoning, Chief. I mean, for starters, there's your assumption that it was Gerald who broke in. How else could he have gotten inside? Maybe with the key that was found near his body, the one that Maria didn't recognize as being her own. Gerald could have borrowed one of the keys and had a duplicate made. That must be why I never caught Gerald in the act of stealing. He was using his duplicate key to get in after hours. 
Maria, we'd like to bring in all of your maple syrup bottles, just to make sure they haven't been tampered with. Uh, sure. Looks like we got all the evidence we need here. You know, the discovery about the key brings up a new question. Since Gerald had a duplicate key to the door and didn't have to break in, who did break in through the window? Chief, you might want to come down to the station. Some tips on this case were just called in. So what are these tips about? A few people saw a car driving very slowly near Maple Hill Sugarbush around midnight the night of the murder. They provided some partial license plate numbers. Enough to run through the system to look for potential matches? Yeah, but there's a slight problem. What is a deputy? I can't remember which of these file folders has the information.
So the license plate belongs to Melanie down at the Stratton Mountain Coffee Shop. I wonder what she was doing in the neighborhood of Maple Hill at that hour. Isn't it obvious? Maybe to you, Chief, but not to me. I'd like to hear Melanie's explanation before jumping to any conclusions. Melanie, we need to have another word with you. About what? About the part of your story that you left out. The part that came after Gerald left your coffee shop the night that he was killed. There's nothing to tell. He just left. Then why was your car spotted in the neighborhood of Maple Hill around the time that he was killed? Okay, after Gerald walked out, I regretted what I'd done. I went outside, but I couldn't catch him. When he drove away, I got into my car and followed him. I was surprised when he headed for Maple Hill. What happened when he got there? I don't know. I was driving a ways behind him, and once I got to Maria's place, I couldn't find his car anywhere. I just gave up and went home. I think after Gerald ended things, you flew into a rage, followed him out to Maple Hill, and killed him yourself. I'm placing you under arrest for the murder of Gerald Morgan. What? I could have never killed Gerald. I loved him. I think Melanie is telling the truth, Chief. I mean, why would she risk being seen following Gerald in her own car in a small town where anyone could have recognized her if she intended to commit murder? All right, all right. I see your point. Excuse me. I need help a customer. It would seem that the $500 Gerald had came from Nature's Gift Foods. Let's go see if we can find out why. Hello again, Chief. Mrs. Fletcher, what can I do for you? Ms. Marshall, when Gerald Morgan was found dead, $500 in a money clip was found by his body. I suspect that the money may have come from you. You have no proof of that. We may, if the serial numbers on the bills can be traced back to a delivery of cash from the bank to your office. I will admit, in the course of my early career, I did some things I'm not exactly proud of to get ahead. Gerald was a charismatic fellow, 
and he charmed his way past my receptionist to get into my office. He found some papers of mine and threatened to turn them over to my boss. So the $500 was a payoff. If that's what you want to call it, yes. I've heard enough. Joanne Marshall, I'm placing you under arrest for the murder of Gerald Morgan. What? That's preposterous. Oh, for pity's sake, Chief. You have to stop jumping to conclusions like this. Now let's think this through. Miss Marshall, do you mind if we take another quick look around? If you must, I have nothing to hide. This syrup bottle with your label on it was found near Gerald's body. Did you supply it, Ms. Marshall? I certainly did not. And since I know you're going to ask, no, I did not put Gerald up to sabotaging Maria Olson's sugar house. But Maple Hill is your competition. For now. But we're hoping to purchase it and add it to the Nature's Gift Foods family. Why would I want to irreparably damage the reputation of a business I'm hoping to acquire? 
And, Chief, it would seem unlikely that Ms. Marshall would send Gerald out on an ethically dubious mission when he already was collecting evidence to blackmail her with. I guess that wouldn't make much sense. Ms. Marshall, do you use red food dye in any of your products? Sure. We use it in some of our processed maple candies. So it's entirely possible that Gerald took the dye for himself. I can assure you that I had nothing to do with it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a meeting with a supplier. I wonder if this letter opener we found was used to force the window open at the sugar house. Let's head back to Maple Hill and find out for sure. I just checked and the scratch marks on the windowsill don't match the letter opener. Yes, the gouge marks in the wood are rounder. Maria, do you have anything around the sugar house that would fit the description of a thin, rounded tool? No, not that I know of. The tree bore is the closest thing. Chief, don't you think it's odd that the killer used a bore found inside the sugar house to kill Gerald? I mean, why search for a new tool for the murder instead of simply using the one they had to pry open the window? There's getting to be entirely too many dead ends in this case. Let's double check and see if we missed anything here at the crime scene. Just not sure what those green fibers we found on the windowsill might be from. I have no idea. Let's head back to the station. Maybe my deputies made some progress on that die. Chief, I have good news and bad news. What's the bad news? The bills found in the money clip at the crime scene can't be traced. Swell. How about the good news? We're just about to do the final tests on that dye in the syrup bottle found at the sugar house.
Looks like the syrup bottle contained a dye called number seven red. Now that we know the exact type of dye Gerald planned to put into Maria's sap, we need to find out where it came from. And the first place to check is Nature's Gift Foods. Chief, Mrs. Fletcher, what brings you back here? Do you use number seven red dye to color any of the foods you produce in this plant? Definitely not. You sound quite certain about that. I am. You see, number seven red is never used as a food coloring because it's highly toxic. I'd like to take another look around to confirm that. Certainly. So if the dye Gerald was carrying isn't used as a food coloring because it's toxic, that makes what he was planning to do to Maria's batch of sap all the more serious. But it also seems to rule out nature's gift foods as its source. Well, back to the station. And back to square one. It's going to take forever to find out what the source of that dye was. I'm afraid so. Hello, Mark. I'm here to collect Gerald's belongings. Of course, Sally. I'll have someone bring the box to your car while you're filling out the yellow release forms. Mrs. Morgan, I nearly forgot. A friend had this scarf of Gerald's, and I offered to return it to you. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Fletcher. I hand-knit that scarf for Gerald last Christmas. I... Better fill out these forms and get back to the shop. Hmm. Hand knit. Oh, dear. What? If Gerald didn't climb through the window at Maple Hill because he had a duplicate key, then he couldn't have been the one who left the green fibers behind on the windowsill. So... Let's have a look at the note Gerald received and those forms Sally just filled out.
There's only one logical explanation for why footprints exactly matching Sally's were found on the floor at the crime scene. Plus, the fact that Sally's handwriting matched a note telling Gerald to meet that night at Maple Hill means we ought to pay her another visit. Hello, Sally. I didn't expect to see you again so soon. Any news on who killed Gerald? All the evidence points to you, Sally. What? It's true. You knew about the affair your husband was having with Melanie Young and laid a careful plan to exact your revenge. You're saying I lured my husband to Maple Hill and killed him? In so many words, yes. You paid a visit to Gerald at Nature's Gift Foods and scribbled the note promising a reward if Gerald would sabotage Maple Hill. Then you left the note and the syrup bottle containing dye, likely yarn dye from this shop, for him to find. That night, Gerald went to the sugar house, but you'd gotten there first. You used a steel knitting needle to pry open the window and get inside to wait for him. But a knitting needle is not a good stabbing weapon, so you used the tree bore instead. Not only did it make a better weapon, but it would cast suspicion on Maria as the killer. This is ridiculous speculation! I have better things to do than listen to your silly stories. Now, if you'll excuse me... When we compare the fibers from that sweater we just found to the fibers left on the windowsill at the crime scene... They'll match. I'll save you the trouble. Sally, why would you want to kill Gerald? Because when I found out he was cheating on me with Melanie, I was furious. How did you find out? One evening, I was alone. Gerald was working late again, or so he said. So I decided to go out for coffee. At one point, I went to use the powder room, and I passed Melanie's office. 
The door was slightly ajar, and I saw the two of them together. <laughs> you didn't confront them? I almost did, but then I thought of a better plan. One that would allow me to get even with Gerald. I set him up to break into Maple Hill and photograph him in the act of tampering with Maria's equipment. To get him fired from his new job? But when he arrived, I couldn't help but confront him about his affair. And he laughed at me. He turned to go and I, I lost it. I grabbed the Maple Boy and I, I rammed it in his back. Sally, I'm placing you under arrest for the murder of your husband. And this time, I'm not jumping to any conclusions. Right, Mrs. Fletcher? Right, Chief. Jess, as a thank you, I'll treat you to the most decadent coffee beverage on the menu. <laughs> That's very kind, Maria, but I think I'd be happiest with a simple cup of tea. Suit yourself. A double-shot mocha latte for me. Have you made any decisions about what you're going to do now? Well, this year's batch of maple sap has been ruined. After having a dead body soaking in it, I certainly can't use it to make syrup. I should say not. But I'm optimistic. My insurance should cover the loss, and Joanne Marshall and I have started new negotiations. Really? Yep. Nature's Gift Foods has a new offer on the table, allowing me to operate Maple Hill as an independent subsidiary. That sounds like it will benefit both of you very well. To sweet success. Hear, hear.